What's going on, fellas, and welcome to our March 2022 coaching video. Welcome to the temporary office. Um, we are in the middle of a move, and so we have uh, moved out of our home um, about a week and a half ago, I guess, we moved out, and we are temporarily um, in my mother's home in the process of moving her out. Uh, and then we are all moving together into one giant home here in the next couple weeks. So I uh, appreciate your prayers uh, in all this. It's kind of chaotic and uh, it's, been, um, it's been interesting to say the least. Uh, but we will not and cannot complain because God has been extremely faithful in all of it. And so we are grateful for the season, I'm grateful to be in the position we're in and grateful for um, the next season for our family and everything that that entails. So uh, I do appreciate your prayers and I am excited about our coaching this month. And so I don't want to delay too much further. I want to jump right into that. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to Proverbs Triple X Club. And um, as always, for everybody else um, on our monthly coaching, we're going to dig a little bit in the Word of God. We're going to teach, coach, look at some things uh, that always gear us towards biblical masculinity, uh, manhood. What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a husband? What does it mean to be a father? Whether you are those things, plan to be those things in the future, praying to be those things, uh, whatever it is, want to always give ourselves opportunities to learn and to grow. And so uh, this month, um, I'm a, I got a very, very small desk that I'm working with here, and we're just going to kind of go with it. Um, but this month, uh, we're talking about... Um, the direction that we had, uh, sort of the trajectory of our life. Um, sometimes we may get uh, discouraged. Sometimes we might even be excited about uh, the direction our life is heading. Maybe uh, we're in a good season. Maybe we're not in a good season. Um, but no matter where you are in life today, no matter what season you're in, no matter what you're going through, no matter what your circumstances are, I want to encourage you with the idea of walking slowly but never backwards walking slowly but never backwards. The actual concept uh, for this, or actually the wording of it, actually comes out of a, a chapter in a book in my leadership class that I teach in high school. Um, for the last couple weeks, we've been going through principles from a, a very interesting book called Atomic Habits. Um, the whole idea of the book is little habits, big changes, uh, small things that we can implement in our lives that can have a pretty profound effect in our lives. Uh, and one of the chapters, um, maybe chapter 11, 12, 13, somewhere around there, there's a chapter that's called Walk Slowly But Never Backwards. And, and some of the ideas I found pretty helpful. Um, some of the ideas my students found helpful. And I wanted to kind of walk through some of those ideas, not specifically from the book, but just the whole idea of what it means to walk slowly but never backwards in and of the, uh, the sense or following the idea that um, again, there may be times in our lives when we're frustrated about where we are. We're not as far along as we thought we would be um, at this point in our lives. Maybe we're not making the same kind of progress or at the same pace that we would like to make. Um, sometimes we're comparing ourselves to where we thought our, we would be, our future self would be at this point in time in our life. And, and so I want to keep you from getting too discouraged no matter where you are. Um, the important thing uh, that we're going to talk about this month is always moving in the right direction. Um, it doesn't matter how fast you're running, how far you're running, as long as you're taking steps in the right direction. We all are going to grow at different paces, um, especially in different seasons of our lives. We might grow um, differently at different seasons. Not only should we not compare ourselves to others, but we really shouldn't even compare ourselves to our former selves um, maybe in different seasons. Um, not that we don't ever want to challenge ourselves or encourage ourselves. This certainly is not making an excuse for laziness um, or inactivity or passivity, uh, but just want to encourage you um, as you move forward, as you're pursuing Christ, as you're following Christ, I want to encourage you to continue taking steps in the right direction, continuing uh, to follow Jesus. Uh, one of the things that, that it talks about in the chapter, he says this, the most effective form of learning is practice, not planning. And I thought about the fact that how often you and I waste so much time and energy in our lives waiting to get better, um, being better, uh, being more prepared, having it figured out, being more financially stable, 
um, whether it's relationships, whether it's our business, whether it's our family. Sometimes we recognize there's things that uh, are lacking or missing in our lives. And, and so we, we maybe want to take the next step in, in, in ministry or the next step in business or the next step in seeking opportunities or serving or working in different ways. And we're like, man, I'm, I'm working on this. And when I get that, that's when I'm going to make this move. Um, I just want to encourage you, um, as I encourage and challenge myself, um, start walking. <laughs> Figure it out as you go. Um, the best way to learn is by doing, um, because standing still is going backwards. The whole idea that I'm going to get better, I'm going to figure it out, I'm going to take this step, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to learn this, and then I'm going to apply. Um, too many people, too many men end up frozen in time, um, becoming passive, becoming inactive, and essentially moving backwards because of lack of movement, lack of motion. And so the whole idea is, man, it doesn't matter how quickly you're learning, learn, walk and learn. Uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. It doesn't matter how fast you can run or how far you can run. It's better to run a hundred meters than to run nothing at all. Um, and this works in so many areas of our lives, man. It, it works um, in our personal lives and in our business lives, family life. And, and I even wrote down just a couple, um, couple of quick things before we jump into the text of scripture. Um, you know, in our finances, what does it look like to move slowly but never backwards? Um, put away five, putting away five dollars a week is better than spending that extra five to six bucks on a coffee at Starbucks. Um, and sometimes we're like, man, if I can't save you know, something substantial, then I guess I'm not going to save at all. And imagine if 20 years ago you would have started saving five dollars a week and start investing five dollars a week, um, walking slowly but never backwards. Um, in our fitness, running a half mile every day or doing push-ups, 10 push-ups every morning is better than doing nothing because nothing is moving backwards. Nothing is becoming inactive. Nothing is moving towards um, uh, inactivity. It's moving towards laziness. It's moving towards atrophy. Um, in our family, you know, one 30-minute meal a week, a uh, game night, a conversation today, um, is better than promising the most elaborate activity with your family next weekend. Uh, doing something today, doing something this week. Um, and your faith, um, getting up and spending a little bit of time every morning in the Word of God and in prayer. You know, 15 minutes a day, just reading uh, a small passage of Scripture, meditating on that, working on Scripture memory, spending some time in prayer, going for a walk and talking with the Lord, laying your heart out, um, bearing it all before Christ. Um, that's better than nothing. Uh, and then uh, one of the areas I always talk about too is fun. Uh, making sure that um, you're prioritizing those small pockets of time for yourself um, every day, every week, every month, every year. Taking care of yourself, knowing what you need to stay even, knowing what you need to stay um, encouraged and balanced and de-stress and, and build up your energy levels, getting the right amounts of sleep, um, hydration, fitness, all those things, making sure you're taking time to do those things every day, every week, every month, every year. Um, again, doesn't matter if you can be the wealthiest you've ever been, the most fit you've ever been, the most balanced and organized that you've ever been, that your family's, you know, just, you know, hitting on all five cylinders. What matters is taking steps in the right direction, little steps, baby steps over time, you know, never underestimate what can be done in six years. Um, just like you should not overestimate what you can do in six months. Small decisions, small habits, big impact in our lives. And so, um, again, don't worry about how fast. Don't worry about how many. Don't worry about how good. It's not about the quantity or the quality of the steps, as long as those steps are being taken in the right direction. Okay, so those are some of the interesting or opening thoughts uh, that I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks and I want to sort of flesh those out as we uh, look at the text of Scripture. Several stories, several things um, that, that kind of came to mind um, as I was thinking about these ideas. Uh, I want to just work through some of those with you. Um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. I want to open there. I'm actually reading uh, hard copy uh, right now, instead of using digital notes, again, different office setup and scenario, do not have nearly as much desk room um, as I normally do at home. So, Second Peter, chapter two, 
verses 20 through 22. Let me read this for us and, and make some observations. Second Peter chapter 2, 20 through 22. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first, for it would have been better for them to have never known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit, and the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. A couple observations. First of all, we escape the defilements of the world through and only through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, no matter where we were, no matter where we were living, no matter what the course of our life was, it was on a path towards destruction, self-centered, selfish, um, not doing things that are good, not doing things that are healthy. Um, that was the course of our lives. And, um, and through the knowledge of Jesus Christ and only through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we can escape that trajectory. We can escape that um, destination. We can escape that course of life. And it says, then having escaped that, right, through the knowledge of Christ, um, then we get entangled again and overcome by the same defilements of the world. So whether saved or at least coming out of um, and into a gospel-centered um world, whether it's through the church, through relationships, um, knowledge of Christ coming out of the entanglements, coming out of the sin, um, and then in some form or in some way, then abandoning um, the truth and the knowledge and the freedom that we have in Christ and going back and getting entangled once again in those defilements. What he says is um, our latter position, our latter estate, our, our latter um, sort of uh, course uh, that we're living under becomes worse than the first. Uh, so it would be better to to be involved, be entangled by all the things of the world, the trappings, the sin, the destruction, uh, and to continue on in that path than it would be to come out of that through the knowledge of Christ and then to revert back to it. So the latter state is worse than the first. Um, and that's when he says, how true does the proverb become that the dog returns to its vomit? Um, why would you ever eat vomit? Why would a dog eat vomit? I try to make sure that I clean it up as soon as my dog ever gets sick. I don't think I could handle watching him uh, lap it up again. Um, but it returns back to, to something that isn't food, isn't sustenance, um, that's not worth eating, something that's so vile and so dangerous even that it's been regurgitated, um, and then returning to consume that as if it were sustenance. Um, that's one way to look at what it would look like to go back to an old way of living after coming to a knowledge of Christ, at least in a way that, that we see and realize that it's better to follow Jesus, that, that there's a better option, that there's a better alternative than following after the course of this world. And then the second part, he says, it's like um, the sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Um, after having been cleansed, going back and becoming defiled again, um, the whole idea of walking slowly but not going backwards, it doesn't matter how fast, how far you're progressing in your walk with Christ. Um, follow him, pursue him at any speed, at any rate, at any level, at, at any growth is better than turning around and going back. So no matter where you are today, brother, keep taking small steps forward in your pursuit of Christ. Philippians 3, uh, now the Apostle Paul, very well-known passage of Scripture, Philippians chapter 3, the whole idea of continuing to pursue, not having um, already attained, verses 13 and 14, brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, not looking back, right? Certainly not going back, not even looking back. It's it's not worthy uh, of looking back. I, I can't go forward and look back. Uh, I can't press on towards the, the call. I can't press on and, and reach and acquire and attain what God has grasped or seized for me. He talks about in the text while looking back. Um, 
if our hands are to the plow and we and we turn to, to look backwards, we're not worthy. We're not fit um, to be working and plowing. And, and so the whole idea is staying focused on what's ahead. Again, I don't care how fast. I don't care how consistent. I don't care how um, successful you think you are. You feel you are. Your perspective is probably skewed anyways. Keep taking steps forward, keep plotting, keep plugging away, keep pursuing Christ. Do not, under any circumstances, look back. It makes me think of the children of Israel uh, when they're wandering in the wilderness. I believe it's in Numbers, maybe chapter 11, somewhere around there. Um, I believe it's uh, the valley of, of Kibroth Hatahavar, something like, something like that. Don't, don't quote me on that. It's been a long time since I read the passage, but Basically, they're, they're saying, um, you know, they're, they're starving in the wilderness. They're tired of eating manna. They're not starving. They're complaining about starving. Tired of eating manna. And, and they make this um, almost tongue-in-cheek comment about, man, you know, we had tons of meat to eat in Egypt. And the Lord's like, oh, you want meat? Dude, I'll, I'll give you a ton of meat. Uh, I'll, I'll give you uh, so much meat that it'll make you sick and, and that you'll die. And so many died in that valley um, the valley, which the Hebrew name means, I believe it's the valley of desire. Um, and so the, the whole point was instead of being grateful for the provision of God, the manna for the miraculous hand of God, how he pro provided food and water in the wilderness, protected them from the Egyptians. I mean, these are people who walked across the Red Sea on dry ground, seeing the walls of water, turning around, seeing the Egyptians drowning in the Red Sea provision after provision, miracle after miracle, faithfulness of God after faithfulness of God. And they're, they're complaining about the delicacies they had um, in Egypt and, and God judging them because their failure to understand exactly where they, they were, their, their lack of gratitude towards the Lord for providing so abundantly and miraculously for them. Uh, and ultimately, some of them lost their lives because, again, their perspective, they were more interested in looking back. They were more interested in what they used to have. They were more interested in what they lost instead of what they were going toward. Uh, in this move, we've, we've talked about it among our family, talked about it with our kids. Um, certainly there will be some transition. There will be some things that are different. There will be some things that we don't have in the new house that we had in the old house. There will be some things in the new house that we have that we didn't have. Um, life will be different. But instead of looking back and, and seeing what we're not going to have anymore, it's looking forward. What will we have? What opportunities will this season afford us? What blessings will we be able to enjoy together as a family, which we wouldn't be able to enjoy in, in the old situation when we're, we had two homes instead of having everyone under one roof and in one home? Uh, and, and that's a choice, right? That's um, a perspective that you and I, we choose every single day what we're going to think on, what we're going to meditate on, how we're going to view the world. Um, and so um, not turning back. Hebrews 6, um, a passage which has perplexed so many people for years, whether or not salvation can be lost. I, I believe that the best way to look at it is just a very severe warning against apostasy, apostasy being turning back, uh, denying faith and moving back towards the world abandoning Christ, uh, the Apostle Paul, believe that he is the author here, warning against that in Hebrews chapter 6. He says this, For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, they've tasted the heavenly gift, they've shared in the Holy Spirit, they've tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then to have fallen away, it's impossible to restore them again to repentance. Since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm, holding him up to contempt. Whether or not this is a genuine believer who is apostatizing uh, or someone who's just affiliated with the church, experiencing the blessings of being part of the church, seeing the power of God, hearing the gospel, and then going back to the life they knew before, regardless of what whatever that is, that let this warning um, serve as a, a, as a sobering moment for you. If having experienced all these things, the power of God, the truth of the gospel, the freedom of Christ, and then returning back to a life without Christ, abandoning the gospel, abandoning the hope of the gospel, which is salvation by grace, not works, 
um, there's no renewal to repentance. There's no coming back from that. You, you abandon what you had, or you at least abandon uh, what you were in the presence of and having the opportunity um, to have an experience. And, and you exchanged that for what you already know to be worthless and pointless and uh, a trajectory and a path that's taking you towards destruction and, 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 and selfishness and self-centeredness, right? Um, it's, there is no salvation outside of Christ. If, if you were pursuing Christ, decided that Christ wasn't worth pursuing and turned back, there is no more salvation. You're not going to find salvation anywhere else. Um, it makes me uh, think of um, the story in, in the Bible, uh, whereas I think I had it written down um, in the New Testament, uh, where, where Jesus, I don't know the text, um, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And at one point he says, um, will you go away as well? He's looking back and seeing all these people abandon him. And, and Peter's like, where else are we going to go? Only you have the words of eternal life, right? Um, if, if you abandon Jesus, wh where do you have to go? If you turn from Christ and, and go back to a different life, a different pursuit, um, where else are you, are you going to find salvation? Where else is there going to be any opportunity to be saved? There's Jesus and then there's nothing. Um, there's only one way toward the Father, Jesus says, John chapter 14. Um, and, and that's the only way of salvation. There is no other way, right? There's no other way to be saved. There's no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No turning back, no salvation anywhere else. Um, staying in Hebrews chapter 10, going into Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith. Um, think about this before we jump into chapter 11. Listen to verse 39. He says, but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. He's like uh, convinced that, that there's a better possession for us and a better future for us. And, and we're not the kind of people who shrink back towards destruction. We're the kind of people who press on um, towards salvation. We're the kind of people who press on towards the the high call, the, the, the call that Paul says, I, man, I, I press, I, I, I strive, I agonize um, toward that. It's worth working for. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. But, but that salvation is worth striving for. It's worth and worthy of, of laboring for it and striving to, to grasp it and seize it. And then, uh, of course, after that, he moves on into this great chapter of faith, all these incredible things that men and women of God did by faith. Um, and there's a, a little section, verses um, 8 through 16. I'll, I'll want to read just this section and because it highlights the importance of, of moving forward in the right direction, and we don't turn back. No matter the progress, no matter where we are, compared to where we thought we'd be, we move forward. And he says this, Hebrews 11, 8 through 16, By faith Abraham obeyed, when he was called to go to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He obeyed. His obedience wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect overnight. You can go back and look at Genesis 11 and 12. He did not obey perfectly. He did not obey immediately in every instance. He had faults. He had failures. So did Paul. So did Moses. So did David. So did Solomon. So did Samson. No one follows Christ perfectly. We're saved by grace. He saves us. He fulfilled the law for us. He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. It says that Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. Small steps, baby steps, one step at a time, one matter of obedience at a time. Imperfect, but pursuing the right direction. He says, by faith, he went to live in a land of promise as if he was in a foreign land. It wasn't his homeland. It wasn't um, even something that he was going to fully receive the inheritance then. It was something that God was, was promising by faith to him and his offspring, his seed after him. He lived in that land as if, he was in a foreign land, because he was in a foreign land, by the way, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, um, temporary dwelling places, right? Nomadic following uh, migratory patterns for the animals where there's water and pasture and all these things, right? Um, 
living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him the same promise. Multiple generations um, living in a land of promise, but still living as though a foreigner. Um, but the reason he went, even though he didn't know where he was going, the reason he went and lived like a foreigner in this traveling band of, of people was because he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Even Sarah, by faith, she received power to conceive, in, even when she was past the age, since she considered God faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, in his loins, right, um, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, as many as the innumerable, innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. And listen to this. This is, this is the, the highlight of all of it. Here's what I want to I want to hit on, and I want this to fall on you heavy and hard um, as you think about pursuing Christ at whatever pace, at whatever speed, at whatever consistency, whatever growth rate, whatever you've got, right? Slow, deliberate, in the right direction. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised. They died in pursuit. They died following slowly and perfectly, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, right? They had enough faith having been promised and, and the faith to see them afar off and to pursue them, right? I might not get there in my lifetime. I might not receive everything, but I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to, I'm going to look for it. I'm going to follow after it every single day. I'm, I may not ever get it now, the here and now, but I, but I, I believe it enough to pursue it. And listen to this, having acknowledged they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Right? So what if I'm living like in a foreign land? You know, that's part of it. Strangers and exiles. We're, I'm seeking a city who has uh, foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Um, it's, it's one that I won't fully inherit until the day of Christ. There's always part of salvation that's future. Even for the, the, the saints who are, have died and are in the presence of Christ, there's a future for them. There's a hope for them. That's after the resurrection, after the day of Jesus. Um, and listen to the verse 15. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. Right? We cannot move forward thinking about what's behind us. We cannot move forward thinking about what we used to have. We cannot move forward thinking about the good old days. We cannot move forward towards the prize and towards the calling, towards, towards everything that God has for us thinking about and secretly fantasizing about and hoping for the things that we left behind. If we do, we'll have opportunities to return, right? After experiencing this freedom in Christ, man, if, if for whatever reason you decide to go back, not only is your last estate worse than the first, but um, you'll never move forward. If you're always looking back, there will always be opportunities to return. Listen, as you struggle um, as you strive, as you battle the, 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 the issues you face, the temptations, the lust that you have, there will always be opportunities to go back. There will always be opportunities to return. There will always be opportunities to go back towards the sin that you left to follow Jesus. But the, the, the strength, the, the secret in all of that is understanding what it says in verse 16. But as it is, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. And for this reason, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Um, the secret is understanding that no matter what was behind us, no matter how fun it was, no matter how, how good it was, no matter how successful it was, um, and no matter how poorly I'm doing in this new direction, no matter how much I stumble, no matter how far I think I should be ahead, I'm moving in the right direction because I'm pursuing a, a place. I'm pursuing a country. I'm pursuing the person who built it for me. I'm pursuing the one who is faithful because I desire a better country. I desire a better one that I've come out of. I desire a better one than I'm currently in, but, but I can see it far off. And I believe it's coming. And he's promised me that it's coming. And so it does not matter how quickly I'm taking steps toward it. I'm taking those steps in the right direction. Brothers, walk slowly, but never walk backwards. 
pursue Jesus, no matter how imperfectly, but never turn back and pursue the things that are worthless, the things that Christ saved you out of. Move in the right direction, baby steps in the Word of God, reading, meditating on it, memorizing in prayer. I don't care how bad you are at prayer, how stupid it sounds in your head. Man, just get on your face before God. Go on walks. Get alone with the Lord. Lay your heart before Him. Surround yourself with brothers in Christ. Keep taking steps. Keep pursuing Jesus. Keep moving in the right direction. Forgetting what's behind. Forgetting about the food in Egypt. Forgetting about the things that were worthless that Christ saved you out of. Forgetting uh, about the, the things that you left behind. Forgetting about the meat in Egypt. Looking for a better country. Convinced it's coming. Believing God for it. I hope um, that this will be a blessing to you, a challenge and an encouragement to you this month. No matter where you are, no matter what stage of life you are in, keep pursuing Christ. Surround yourself with brothers where you are. Find a local expression, a body of Christ, a, a, a church, a Bible study, a men's group, somewhere where, where you can love and be loved, encourage and be encouraged, challenge and be challenged. Um, as you continue to pursue the Lord. Um, if there's any way we can continue to be a blessing to you, you can always find more information on how to reach us. Contact us on our website at www.proverbstriplexclub.com. I look forward to connecting with you either in person uh, at any one of our gatherings and our weekly meetings and opportunities as we meet uh, in Northeast Florida, um, usually every quarter. Uh, or reaching out through uh, technology. You can find us online. Uh, and if there's anything I can do, feel free to reach out. I look forward to connecting with you again next month. Hope to see you soon. And uh, I guess that's it for March. We'll see you in April.